Hello, 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 everybody. I'm Nancy Gardner. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you could join me today. Um, we're going to talk about probably one of the most important topics we should learn to master today, but it is it is arguably one of our least favorite. Um, Peter Drucker says, until we can manage time, we can manage nothing else. And he's, in case you don't recognize the name he's big time management guru written lots of best selling books and i completely agree with him as someone who has not always managed my time well but has learned to do it i will tell you once you get there it is so worthwhile you won't be able to believe it because really how we spend our time is how we spend our life and it's a choice a lot of times in real estate, we think it isn't. We convince ourselves of that, but but we're wrong. And the choices you make will really depend on your values, and you know, and whether or not you know your priorities, the goals that you may have set, whether or not they're real to you, whether or not they matter to you. So let's start at the beginning. First thing I want us to get clear on is, what's our job? I, I know this sounds so trite, but I promise you it's not. What is our job? First and foremost, it's to generate business. If you're doing what I've taught you to do, you are working your sphere of influence, you're doing lead follow-up and follow-through, you might also be working expired, you know, or FISBOs, you know, open up. That's your job, okay? You're creating business, generating business. That's what salespeople do, okay? The next part of the job is we make presentations. We make them to the buyer. We make them to the seller. And hopefully that results in listing property, showing property, and selling property, okay? All part of the job. Another part of the job is preparation and follow-up. And that's where you're going to be training, you're going to develop market knowledge, you're going to do research and analysis, you're going to develop effective marketing plans, you know, and then the last part is our follow-up and follow-through, really, where we're coordinating all the contract requirements. We're coordinating things like, um, you know, settlement, S close of escrow, things that have to do with mortgage, title, inspectors, attorneys, appraisers, all of that. And the, and the key here is for us to learn to balance our work. And we get out of whack here. And, we, and, and a lot of where we get out of whack is because we really get away from what our job is. And, and so in order to, you know, balance your work, in order to maximize effectiveness and eventually efficiency, but understand effectiveness, how well we do our job has to come first, you know, and, and then the efficiency will follow. But if you're great at generating business, but you never work on your presentations, you never update your training, you know, your pricing skills are lousy. It won't matter how many appointments you get. You're not going to take the listing today. Or conversely, if you're spending all your time on preparation, I mean, you're, you're you know, retraining and retraining. You're getting ready to get ready. That's what we used to call it. Okay, you're taking every class you can get your hands on. But you never work at generating your business. Same outcome. You're not going to have any. So the, the key is to balance. And it's our, you know, and think of it as sort of like a wheel. Understand when that wheel gets out of whack, it's not going to roll in the direction we want it to go. So first, next thing I want you to take, th or well, to think about really is how you're spending your time. Now, this comes from a book written by Stephen Covey. I'm a big fan of his. Uh, entitled First Things First. And and you're going to have a handout that will allow you to list these categories in terms of where you spend your time. But I want to explain them. 
in the upper left quadrant, he calls that, that quadrant of time important and urgent. And what we mean by that is this is necessity. It's crisis. You've got a deadline. Um, something happened. You came into the office, and the office was burgled, and your computer you left there overnight was stolen. Um, you lost your cell phone, you had a wreck coming into the office. You have to deal with those things. Maybe you have a health issue that has to be dealt with. Those things are important and they're urgent. We don't have any choice but to deal with them, okay? The next quadrant, upper right, he titles important and not urgent. And this really is the quadrant of leadership, planning, training, preventing problems, building relationships, all of that stuff, You're generating business, those things are important, but they're not necessarily urgent. You know, generally, there's nobody standing over you saying you must do this. That's why it's called leadership. It's yours to understand that if you don't do these things, you won't have the business that you want to have. And so you have to exercise the choice. The third quadrant, lower left, not <clears throat> important and urgent. Covey calls this the quadrant of deception, something that appears urgent, but it's not. These are what you call your time robbers. And boy, this is where real estate lives. We respond to every call, every text, every message like it has to be done right away, and it doesn't, okay? You can control more of your time than you think, and when we get on to the next slide and we look at what's getting in the way, you're going to see why you do this. You're going to understand it. This is where most people in real estate live. We spend stuff our time on stuff that really is important, but we somehow convince ourselves that it's urgent, and it isn't. Now, the last quadrant, not important, not urgent, Covey calls waste. Too much TV, too much time on the computer, um, excessive recreation or excessive relaxation. You're, you know, pretty much a couch potato. Um, you procrastinate. You are a perfectionist. Perfectionism is waste. Nothing is perfect. Nothing. And oh, guess what? Those of you that are perfectionists, by the time you think you've got it to where it's perfect in your eyes, something has changed and you're going to have to go back and update. Perfectionism is, is hiding. You never get around to doing anything because it isn't perfect. Don't kid yourself about it. Life's not perfect. Work's not perfect. We're not perfect. And the sooner we get past that, the happier and more productive we're going to be. So now understand, when I say relaxation or exercise being excessive, what I, I want to make an important distinction here. If you need to relax, if you need um, uh, time off, that's leadership, all right? That's you saying, if I don't take this time off, my work is going to suffer if it isn't already. And in terms of exercise, exercising every day is something successful people prioritize. They know that in order to stay at the top of their game, in order to be productive on a consistent basis, to deal with demanding, you know, incredibly informed people today. We have to take care of ourselves and take enough time off, which I believe, I, I very much believe in. I, if you're highly productive, I like you taking a week, a quarter. And if you can't get away a week, at least take a long weekend. You've got to have a break. Research has shown it makes us better at what we do. When we're stressed and tired, we miss opportunities. We make mistakes, and, and no amount of pushing will turn that around. We have to relax. We have to let the little gray cells unwind. And as far as exercise, strongest mind-body connection we have, 
affects our body within 30 seconds, uh, or excuse me, 30 minutes of when we start, clears those little gray cells, helps you stay focused, not to mention, you know, the health benefits from it. So think about where you're spending your time. I've given you a handout that has these uh, four categories on it and room to list where you're spending your time. And what I want you to do is over the next two weeks, track it. Track where you're spending your time. And let's see how you come out. All right. Let's figure out what gets in the way and look at this list. I mean, we've got more excuses than, <laughs> than, than we can imagine. And I wanted them up here all at one time because I wanted you to see how many there are. When, when we're unclear on our goals and priorities, there really is no reason for us to try to prioritize what we do or learn to get better control of our time. A lot of you set goals for other people. You set goals for your manager because you think they want you to, because you, you know, and you tell them what you think they want to hear. Nobody's going to work towards something you did for somebody else unless it's, you know, maybe a family member and you're part of a bigger picture. Okay. But you want to be clear and they want to be your goals, your priorities, a lack of belief in what you want. You know, I find that hard in the real estate business to, to really digest because real estate is powerful. It can give you a lifestyle like no other. There's no glass ceiling here, that, you know, and it, it's wide open if you're willing to do the work. So understand that and understand that your lack of belief may come from other kinds of work that you've done. But in real estate, you're wide open. It's up to you. The next one, you like the pressure? Thrive in chaos? Listen, this has got drama written all over it, and this is where a ton of real estate people live. They, they, it, you know, it drives attention to them. But in the end, you won't, if you're working under pressure, you won't do your best work. You will forget things. You will overlook things. And thriving in chaos, you'll burn out. Over a given amount of time, you'll burn out. Not allowing enough time for the activity. You know, most agents don't allow uh, travel time. Well, golly, if you live around here, which is around Washington, D.C., travel time is a huge factor in everything you do. You can't even go to the grocery store without factoring in how long it's going to take you to get there. And so, again, think about the time that it will take you. Factor that in. No systems or organization. You know, that's really hard to believe given everything that technology has provided us. CRM is absolute necessity today. And also, organization that is duplicatable. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you take a listing. You've got systems in place that allow you to recreate things you've already done, just putting in new information. You're not starting from scratch. You're a night person or a morning person. Well, guess what? In real estate, you can pretty much work with that. I'm pretty much a morning person. I used to think I was a night person. Learned, because of some work I was doing, uh, that I really was a morning person, and I love it. I absolutely do my best work before, you know, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And it's one of the reasons I don't coach past 2 o'clock in the afternoon, because I don't feel like I give people what they deserve. So whatever it is, real estate does give you some ways to deal with that. You know, body clocks are important. They matter. So work with it. All right? Failing to remember what we need to do, that's called a list. And believe me, this happens. And it doesn't just happen to you once you're over 50. It happens all the time. Make a list. Have checklists. They're, they're your new best friend, I promise. You, when you're using my listing presentation and my buyer presentation, you've got checklists for both of them because I know that that happens. You know, we can come in, you know, or go to an appointment or go into the, come into the office every day, and we've got the, 
the best intentions and something happens, a phone call, a distraction, an interruption that sends us out into left field and half of what we were going to do, you know, as they say, falls on the cutting room floor. You know, if you've got checklists, use them or create them if you don't. An unrealistic workload. This happens a lot with top producing people. And I see it all the time. I was doing some business planning with some of my top producers earlier this year. And when they were looking at how many phone contacts they would have to make every day, and they had figured it out incorrectly, so we fixed it. But, I mean, it was like 20 calls a day. And I'm like, you're, you can't do 20 calls a day. You, you, you wouldn't do it even if you had the time, but you don't have the time. And she said, I know. But I thought that's, I said, no, you don't. And what we ended up with when I refigured it was five a day, which was completely doable. That was a half an hour of her time, and we could knock it out. You know, but you, you've got to you know, make sure that what you say you want and the work required to do it, that they're in, they're in line because it won't happen otherwise. Uh, when you and if you're extremely busy, maybe you're you know you're producing at a level you've never produced before. That can really catch up with you. Again, your systems, your organization, your checklists are going to help you immensely. But you will also learn what to say no to. Allowing interruptions and distractions. This can happen a lot, and it can happen a lot in a real estate office. We can be really bad at respecting uh, or, dis let's say, disrespecting each other's time. So be careful of that. Make sure that you respect yourself first because this is your life you're creating. These are your priorities that you're, you know, you're dealing with. And I will also say to watch this. If you are an agent that has set some really um, growth-oriented goals this year and you're out producing your buddies, don't be surprised that they try – and sabotage you because they will. You know the old saying, misery loves company? Yeah, it really does. If you show a group of low or non-producers that that can change and you are changing it, in effect, you really are challenging them and they're running out of excuses. So they will try to sabotage you. Be careful there. Respect what you want. Getting involved in other people's business, and this can be a lot of the interruptions and distractions that you that you experience. Uh, and sometimes, because you're a really good agent, low or non-producing agents will ask you questions. There are a couple of ways to um, handle that, and these both came out of One Minute Manager, which I read a hundred years ago. And the first one is to say you got to think about what you're doing, and if it is if it takes less time to deal with the interruption of the question at hand, then you do. And you say, I can give you two minutes. You will, you will define that time frame so that they don't, you know, lollygag around your desk or in your office and, you, you know, you can't get back to, to, uh, to the task at hand without feeling like you're being, you know, impolite. The other thing you do besides, you know, giving them a time frame, if you don't want to be interrupted, just say, I can't be interrupted right now. I'll, fi I'll find you when I'm done. So in other words, then you would go to them. And that's another great way of defining how much time you'll spend there. Because you'll go in, answer the question, and leave where if they come into your office, ask the question, and you're answering it, they sometimes don't leave even though they have an answer. So those are ways to handle that. Life changes, health issues, these happen. These happen, okay? When it comes to life changes, um, obviously get the help that you need. If you need outside help, get it. That's a sign of strength, not weakness, okay? And, and then once you learn how to deal with whatever's coming your way, don't let it define you. 
don't let it define you. A lot of people do that. They let divorce define them. They let, you know, death define them. All these things can be a part of life. Horrible, yes, but a part of life. And please know that you're not the only person going through it, and you will get through it. But don't let it become your life. Health issues, for heaven's sakes, that's a priority. You deal with it. Okay? That's important and urgent, as long as you're not a hypochondriac. You know, you've got to deal with those things. Don't put it off. Deal with it. Being a perfectionist. Um, boy, this is, being a perfectionist is really a way of hiding and a lot of perfectionists don't think this. They think that they're getting it right. But the truth is, nothing in life is perfect. Not us, not the product that we're trying to create or what we're working on. Nothing is perfect. And waiting until you create something that you believe is perfect is a way to avoid it. Because, oh, by the time you decide it's perfect, something will have changed and you'll have to go back in and update it. Don't do that. Get it out there. Do the best work you know how to do at the time and get it out there. Now, the next one, procrastination. This was so interesting. I'm going to share with you later on the traits of really successful people. And when I was reading on this, every single one of them, every one of them, and I can count myself in this, deal with procrastination. It is, <laughs> it is something that lands on our plate whether we want to or not. The way I've learned to deal with it is that I have decided that procrastinating and the stress that I put myself under because I procrastinated isn't worth it. That it is so painful to me and so stressful, I won't do it anymore. So I really set my own limit. But understand, it is, it is something that most people have to deal with and deal with it they do. They recognize it, and they deal with it. The next one, oh boy, this was me for a long time when I was an agent. Hated structure. I felt like I was losing my freedom because, oh boy, doesn't real estate give you lots of freedom? I mean, I, kept, I remember thinking way back when, oh boy, I don't have to drive in traffic. I don't have to do this. I mean, and so I was, I don't have to do all this stuff out of a job because I wasn't doing anything. I was so, you know, enthralled with having this freedom, it never accounted for anything until I woke up and realized. So understand that real freedom, real freedom comes from getting what you want. That's what real freedom is. Getting what you want, building the life you want, having the options that are important to you and the people you care about. That's what real freedom is all about. So don't kid yourself. Fear of success. You know, this is more prevalent than most people believe. Um, back when I was in management, <clears throat> we had this management consultant come in, and he was talking about understanding uh, fear of success and fear of failure. And we were all in management, and we thought, oh, well, we don't fear success. This is what we're all about. Well, he did an exercise with us that illustrated Without a doubt, 100% of us feared, uh, success, um, feared success. Not failure, feared success. And you know, when you think about it, we all have a lot of role models for failure. We hear it all the time. Watch what you say. It affects how you think. Instead of looking at it like, oh God, I can't believe I have to. I can do that. Sure, I'll figure that out. Yeah, I'll get that done in time. Change how you approach things. All that other, that's, that's you're fearing success. What happens if you get everything you want? What happens if you build the life that you've been dreaming about? You can keep on building. You can keep on dreaming. That's what life's all about. That's how we're proud of ourselves. And as the older we get, the more important that is. So understand, you may fear success. And all of us in that, gr in that group, and there was about 25 of us in that room, we were all guilty of it. 
and it was it was an extraordinary exercise. The last one I've listed here is afraid to fail and blame others. People blame is a waste of time, of energy, and all it does is says something about you. Deal with it, whatever it is. If it's really bad, it's bad enough that you have to deal with it. What what does blame do? What what is it what does it accomplish? Nothing. Nothing. And this is part of emotional maturity. Learning to accept what comes at you and deal with it rather than look for the reason, oh, well, this, she did this, or it was his fault, or he didn't do that. Fix it. Fix the problem. You know, that's what the job is. Move on. You're going to triple the amount of time you spend on something blaming other people, and it's not going to resolve it. You're going to end up still having to deal with it and what I would you know I, I know some of these sound familiar to you I know they do you know but when you can see your priorities clearly your goals clearly you're going to be able to get above all this stuff and you're going to move toward what you want and what you learn and this is this is a big lesson I, I remember learning it not about managing your time it's really about managing ourselves and that is something that most of us would rather not really be faced with. Very powerful when you understand it. Very powerful when you can get beyond it. Watch what happens in your life. Watch what happens when you get beyond that. It's pretty amazing. You're going to surprise yourself. Okay. Now we're going to look at what a productive routine would look like. So that's probably why you, you know, are watching the webinar. Okay. The two things you want to let govern your routine is that, first off, you want to understand work in blocks of time. Do all of your business generation at one time. Do your lead follow-up and follow-through at one time. Use time blocking to arrange your activities, okay? What happens when you do that is that it takes you less time. And also, in other words, if you're making your sphere of influence calls, you're going to warm up. You're going to get better at making the calls. You're going to relax into it. it. takes you less time. You're more yourself. It's easier to do. You know, work in blocks of time and complete the important work early, 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 early. You know how it is in this business. The longer you're there, the crazier it gets. One phone call can take you out into left field and keep you there for a good segment of time. Do the important things early. Okay, schedule the things that you need to do on a consistent basis to build and generate your business in the earliest part of the day before that day unravels on you. Okay, so... Let's take a look at what that could look like. This is going to be a lot easier than you think. Promise, promise, promise. Okay, here's an example. Let's say you get to the office by 9, you settle in, you go get some coffee, some tea, whatever you do. Settle in. By about 9.15, and again, you adjust this toward your time frame. You make your SOI calls. Please, make these first. This is how you will build and generate consistent income. And given all the other things I've taught you on previous webinars, hopefully you understand how critical that building these consistent and relevant relationships with our sphere are and what a safeguard they're going to be against what's coming to us online and off. Without it, you're at high risk, high risk. It's the relevant relationship and the consistency of it that will protect you, but not if you don't have it. Now, remember what I've taught you in your sphere of influence calls. You call Most of you will call your sphere once a quarter. There are 20 business days in a month, 60 business days in a quarter. If you've got 180 people in your sphere, three people a day. If you've been in business a long time, if you're highly productive and you've got a large sphere of influence, let's say it's 300, call them once every six months, twice a year. Because remember, you're sending out email data every month. 
and hopefully you're getting in front of them once a year. So you call them twice a year because you've been doing this a long time. You're highly productive, highly visible. And just let's say you have, you know, so there's 120 business days in six months. So let's say, let's see here, you have a 300 people in your sphere. That's still three, three a day. Four, I mean, that's how you try to keep the number of calls below five a day. Once it gets over five a day, guys, I've been doing this work for over 20 years, we'll find a reason not to do it. I promise you, you will. So if you will stretch it out, do them quarterly, do them semi-annually based on your production and the size of your sphere of influence, you will pr we'll probably won't have any trouble keeping those calls at five or less a day. Gang, that's 15, 20 minutes. That's it. You can, you, if your business isn't worth that, you're kidding yourself. You're not going to have any business. So you allow half an hour for that, and you do it first. And the reason you do it first is because if you do follow up and follow through first, you all know what's going to happen here. You will find a reason you don't have to make those calls. <laughs> okay? I, I got your number on this. I've seen this too often. Oh, I had this happen. Oh, I had. No. Whatever it is, it's not as important as your income, as the level of production you want, as the options you want for yourself and your family. You make those, if, you're, if those things can't wait 15 or 20 minutes, something's on fire, okay? So then at 9.45, I gave you, gave you half an hour to make your sphere calls. Again, do your lead follow-up and follow-through. From 10.30 to noon, that's your flex time, okay? This is when you're going to do your preparation. You go to training, coaching, office meetings, whatever else, all the different things that you can do in the morning. But if you look at this, from 9 to noon, you've finished everything you need to do in order to build and grow business, your business and have a consistent income. It's there. Now, if you see that the first 90 minutes are your most important period here, okay, that's where your business generation is and your customer service with your follow-up and follow-through, all right? And so that 90 minutes is the most important part. If something happens, if an inspector can't meet you but at 9 o'clock, if some, you can flip it. You can flip it. You can do it from 10.30 to noon. You're, I've been, I haven't got you in a straitjacket here. But if you'll develop a routine that works for you, you're going to find that you start getting what you want, and you're going to get it in less time. You know, I think one of the things that surprised me most about learning to manage my time was how much more free time I had. You know, and I'm, I was that one that, you know, feared loss of freedom. That was me. I had my name written all over it. Uh, I actually have more freedom than I've ever had. And me learning to manage my time allows me to do the work I do. It allows me to work with individual clients, and it allows me to get on an airplane and come see you guys when you need me there in-house. I do that by managing my time, and I still have a life. And, and that's how I got it. And it's so freeing. It's, it's, it's really a wonderful, wonderful thing. Remember, when you're putting this together, the simpler the better, okay? And that afternoon, what happens in the afternoon? It's open. Whatever else you need, plug it in. Your appointments, okay? Your, plug in your appointments. You know, whatever you want. You know what? If you've done everything, you're on track, nothing's come up the afternoon, I don't care what you do. You know, our, our time gets crazy anyway. If you've got a free afternoon, enjoy yourself. And You know, it's okay. It's allowed because you're working your plan. You're on track. You're managing your time. And that's what will happen. It's a good thing. All right. This is really, really important. we got to learn to control our phones. And most people think today you can't, but you can the first thing you want to do is learn to treat everything in your routine as an appointment, like that 9 o'clock or 9.15 appointment to generate business, your 9.45 appointment to do your leads follow-up and follow-through. 
Okay. And so when somebody says, you know, can you meet me at 10? And that's right at your, um, in the middle of your lead follow-up, then you can say, you know, I have appointment at 10, but I could be there at 11 or I could be there at one. See, I'm flipping something. I'm giving them a choice. Most people understand that. All right. If you're up here, you can wait six months to get an appointment at a doctor or a dentist. You know, you better not have an emergency because it's too bad. Um, but, you know, offer alternatives. I have an appointment. They don't need to know what you're doing. They're not entitled to know that. Okay? This is your business. So treat that routine as appointments. The next thing you learn to do when you're learning to control your phone, phone is leaving a voicemail message every day. Okay? And what you say is, good morning, it's Friday, February the 23rd. I have appointments this morning until about uh, 10.30. I'll be returning calls at that time. Please leave your name and a number where I can reach you then. If this is an emergency, text me at... See what you're doing? What you're doing by updating that every day and giving the date is you're saying, I'm paying attention to this. It's not an old message that you left there three weeks ago when you went on vacation. Okay? I watch this every day. And you've also been right there in that message, separated your calls into anything that might be an emergency. You've given them a way to get you uh, and just you know, a question or something like that. And that's another good thing that you want to do. And the more productive you get, the more important it is that you're able to do that. Okay? They know they can get you in case of an emergency. You're not saying that. But you're also protecting your time. And the more you respect yourself and what you want out of your work, and what it provides for your life, the easier this stuff will be for you to do. Okay. Now, let's take a look at how people that are really productive, what do they do differently? What, you know, what, what is it that, that allows them to be so productive? I've given you this in a handout, by the way, so you're going to have all this. Um, the first thing is they take responsibility for their results. They don't make excuses. I mean, sometimes you do have to explain something, but you don't, they don't make excuses. You know, I think one of the things I was um, talking to this woman on a, on an airplane one time. I was flying out to San Francisco, and she was uh, a producer on PBS, and she had produced this um, series on on Africa. And we got to talking because I'd seen it; and it was fascinating. And she said, "You know, in all the tribes in Africa and all the different languages, there's they do not in any of those languages do they have a word for." Our word, try. They either do it or they don't. That's really powerful. Let that sink in. It's really powerful. And productive people, that's how they think. I'll do it or I won't. And if I'm not going to do it or can't do it or whatever, I'm going to tell you that. But I'm not going to make an excuse. They also have no need for, an appro have no need for approval. They don't need their prospects to like them or to love them. And a lot of people in sales, they need to be liked. I, I've told people before, I said, your need to be liked is your biggest business expense. Real professionals know that that distance is healthy. It doesn't mean you're adversarial or nasty or unlikable. It means you're professional. You know, I mean, think about it. It's why doctors don't like to treat their family, because they don't like to de have to give them bad messages. They don't have to, you know, be the deliverer of bad news. It's better to have some distance. You'll 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 work on a higher level as a professional. They also don't become emotional. They stay right there in the moment. Okay, stay do the job that's required. They're not asking you to get emotional. They're asking you to solve the problem. You're the professional. Productive people believe in the value of what they provide. 
hopefully after this series, you're going to get clearer on your value. And it's something we've not been good at before. We've done a lot of work, but we've never really been good at nailing our value. I dealt with that with you in the very first webinar I did for you. Go back, revisit it, look at it. How much of it have you executed? Do you believe in all those things? Because you provide them and you understand the value they create for your clients. The next one, they're goal-oriented and they respect their time. You can't expect someone else to have more respect for your time than you. They won't. And by the way, people that don't respect their own time clearly will have no respect for yours. Zip. None. Okay? Doesn't even land on their radar screen. Productive people are competent qualifiers. They have no fear of talking about money, and a lot of you do. A lot of you are lousy at qualifying. Guys, I don't know how you do your job without it. I know how you waste a lot of time. I know how you work with people who can't execute. I know it's why you run into a lot of problems in your contracts. You're a professional. Qualifying is part of the job. You are handling the largest single financial transaction most people make in a lifetime. How can you not talk about money? Think about it. Productive people continue to improve their skills. They are lifelong learners. I'm going to tell you, some of the agents I work with, some of the brokers I work with are incredible at what they do. And they would never think of not going to training, not updating what they're doing, not being coached. They know it makes a difference. They see the value in it. They are trainable. Now, attending training does not mean you're trainable. Being trainable means you can hear what's being said. You can grow to it and implement it. And a lot of us don't do that. We go to, go to classes, we clap at the end, and we don't do a darn thing. Trainable means you execute and implement. They're coachable. You know, as great a ball player as Michael Jordan was, in his book, he said, I have a coach. I do what my coach says to do. I don't second guess him. And that coach never played ball at the level Michael Jordan did. But they understood the value of somebody on the outside looking in. Are you coachable? Productive people are. They have a strong commitment to their success. They do the work required. And again, they address procrastination. It is it's something everybody has to deal with. And if I, again, if I find myself procrastinating, which I can do right up there with the best of them, I go, no, I'm not going back to that dark hole again. That is the rabbit hole. I'm not going down there because it's awful. When I feel like I have been rushed, I haven't done the job that I could have done, or I'm stressed out, putting everything. No, I won't do it. I won't do it to myself anymore. And so whatever it takes for you to deal with it, deal with procrastination. It is a part of most people's lives. And understand that and deal with it. Okay. Now here's some ways to work smarter. Declutter your desk. Remember Back when we were looking at all the ways, that, you know, the, all the things that can get in your way, and one of them was distractions, a lot of people in sales are creative. They're creative personalities. And it, it's, you know, they're good with people. There's, you know, this is not a negative. It's, it's a wonderful thing to be creative. But when you're creative, you're also easily distracted. And if your desk is a mess, I promise you, there's where you're going to get distracted. You'll see something on that desk. A couple of weeks ago, I was getting all my tax stuff ready for my accountant. And I had it on one end of my desk, and I was working on the other. And I kept seeing that stuff, and I'm like, I can't, I can't look at this. So I moved it out of the room someplace else to like, you know, and worked on it there because it was distracting the heck out of me. The IRS will do that. But understand... It does make a difference. Whatever distracts you, get rid of it. Be part of the 20%. Carve out 90 minutes a day for the important. 
If you look at that first 90 minutes that I gave you in that example of a productive routine, generating your business, following up and following through on leads, that's, that's the basis. That's the foundation of what we do. But only 20% of the people do it. Learn to work less. Your productivity decreases after 49 hours of work each week. So if you think putting in 60 hours is getting you someplace, I'm here to tell you it's not. They've done all the research on this, so stop. Go back to what I said about the benefits of taking time off. There are, uh, they're enormous. Again, your creativity will return. Your problem-solving ability will return. You, you'll, you, know, you won't miss opportunities. You won't make mistakes. It's just amazing what happens when you take care of yourself. Stop phoning it in. If your phone is a distraction, and for most people it is, turn your phone off during those critical times. If you're working on a deadline, you've got a listing presentation, and, and the pricing analysis is really difficult on this property, and you, you've got to give it that night, turn your flipping phone off. Focus on what you've got on your plate. If, if the phone distracts you in the morning when you're generating business, again, if you've left that voicemail, you can turn that flipping phone off. I know how distracting it is. I get it. And so you got to know yourself. And if you know this will get in your way, do something about it. Delegate when you can. You can't control everything. And the more productive you are, the more you're going to need to look at this. If you're a highly productive agent and you're spending your time on paperwork, you're kidding yourself. You're doing work that is paid much less per hour than what you are earning if you're highly productive. So what are you doing? Okay. You can't control everything. Nobody can. And then the last two things, get enough sleep and get enough exercise. They're huge. It's how I do what I do. It's how I keep on keeping on because I make both of those a priority. And they... And they make all every part of my life better. Recognize the productivity killers. Phones, texting, the internet, social media, gossip, email, and again, procrastination. I listed it last, but it is certainly not least. Dig in there. There's power in action. That's why people say that. Get started. That's why Nike says, just do it. That's what they're talking about. Just go do it. Don't think about it. If you think about it, you'll talk yourself out of it. You'll self-doubt yourself into a corner. Get started. You'll figure it out. You'll get it done. Maximize your effectiveness first. You know, really great time management and, and being highly productive. It really is about effectiveness and efficiency. But Effectiveness has to come first. And in today's world, what I want you considering is, again, a reminder of what I've taught you, the ways we need to adapt to that new consumer, understanding that there is a new consumer out there and what they understand, updating your approach with your sphere to make sure that it's consistent and it's relevant. Your presentation's updated. They're using a professional format. You're using data using data as a basis for any advice and counsel that you offer, using, using your production to demonstrate and show your abilities. That's what that says about you. I can get results for my clients because I know what I'm doing. Updated your online profiles with your production and your reviews and changed your marketing from marketing hype to marketing help. All of that you've got to get behind first if you're going to have your time under control. Because if you haven't done it, you're going to find out what you're doing is not working. You're going to find out it's taking you longer. You're scrambling. So lay the groundwork. Put the foundation in place so you can build on it. 
And lastly, Stephen Covey says time management is really a misnomer. The challenge isn't to manage time. It's really to manage ourselves. And I, I got to tell you that there are no, just no truer words. I'm a big Covey fan. If you haven't read his book, Seven Habits, or First Things First, or some of the other ones that he's written, um, you're missing out because they're terrific. Uh, and they will help you in all kinds of ways, not just professionally, but personally as well. Um, I hope this has helped you today. Again, you know, I've given you a handout where you can make a list to track where you're spending your time and track it for two weeks. See where it is, and it'll help you get clear on what you need to do to improve. And understand, Rome wasn't created in a day. You won't go from lousy at this to perfect at this in one week. You're not going to do it. Nobody does. But you can continue to get better and better and better. And I kind of think that's what it's all about. Take good care out there, people. I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for being with me.